Hello, welcome back to another video on Inkscape. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at the tweak tool. We're going to look at all the different modes and settings and how we can use it to adjust the position, colour, orientation, size and shape of the objects in our projects. I'll then show you how you can use it to sculpt and morph your illustrations like I've done with this light bulb, adjusting all of the paths at the same time. So stay tuned and we get straight into it. So when we use the tweak tool, we can use the tweak tool on a variety of shapes and paths. So I'm just going to come up, I'm going to get our ellipse tool, I'm just going to drag out an ellipse. I'm then going to get the bezier tool and just draw a closed path. We can give that some colour. And I'm also going to come up at the top here, we've got shapes. So I'm going to stretch a shape along our path by going down to ellipse. And just going to create a shape that way. I'm just quickly doing this to demonstrate how we can, how it affects different shapes. So sorry, move that back up. So if we get the selection tool, whenever we use the tweak tool, we need to select the objects that we want it to affect. So I'm going to drag a box over all of these. We come down, select our tweak tool. When we select our tweak tool, we get a selection of options at the top here. We've got width, which just is indicated by the orange circle around my cursor, which is just the area that's affected by the tool. We've got force, which is how much it affects things. So if, if we turn that right down, the effect of our tool won't be that dramatic. And then if we turn it right up, it yeah, be a lot more um, exaggerated. Uh, the next button along is for if you're using a drawing tablet for example where your force is um, dictated by the pressure you put on your pen. We've then got a selection of modes that we can use and at the end we've got fidelity. Fidelity is just a measure of how precise the path is described. So if you have a low fidelity, it'll try and re uh, simplify the path and reduce the number of nodes. If you have a high fidelity, it'll try and keep all the features of the path and generally results in a huge amount of nodes. So you want a happy medium if you can get it. So not too many nodes, but keeping as much detail as possible. And right at the very end, we've got the color settings for the tool. So if we go into our first mode, which is move objects in any direction, we can literally just come in and we can push objects around. Now this works on all objects. So any of the modes that don't actually affect the shape, the path, work fine like this. But then we've got further along, we've got options that actually deform the shape of our paths. So if we click on the first one, push parts of path in any direction, we can actually deform the shape of our paths. It's working a bit slower on that one, but it, it is working. But where we've got this effect, where we've stretched a shape along the path, what's going to happen is we get all this major distortion. So if you want to use it on a stroke where you've stretched a shape along the stroke. What you first have to do is if we back step to get it back to normal, we come out, we get our selection tool. You can go in, you can click path, object to path. So when we get our nodes tool and select it, you can see it's got nodes all the way around it now. So now it is a, a shape in its own right. So now if we go back in to our tweak tool, with the mode selected, we can now deform it as we'd expect it to work. So I think the next thing I want to do is go over the different modes. So I've just created an array of 6x6 stars. These I've used tile clones for this. I've separated it from the original shape, so these are all standalone objects now. So if we come up with our selection tool, we can drag over the top of all of them to select them. And we can come down to our tweak tool and we work through our modes describing each of the modes. So the first mode is move objects in any direction. So when we come in with this one, we can literally just push our paths. 
like I say, the first the first lot of modes that we've got at the top don't actually change the shape of our objects. So we can literally just move them about. The next one along moves objects towards the cursor. So whenever you use the tweak tool, if you just position it and press down on the button, nothing happens. It's not until you start moving the cursor that it starts to work. Now this one attracts objects towards the cursor. But if you notice on the cursor, if I move it over to the side, there's a little arrow pointing to the cursor. If we press shift, the arrow changes direction. Now we can use it in the opposite way. So we can, it repels objects away from it. So as we move it about, they get pushed away. So that's the second one. So the third um, tool we've got uh, moves objects in random direction. So this one, as you move it over, it just jitters the stars about in a random direction. So you can add a little bit of randomness quickly to any any project you're working on. Fourth one shrinks objects. So as you move across them, it shrinks the objects. And this one again, it's got a little symbol uh, beside the cursor indicating what it does. If you hold down shift, it does the opposite. So it makes things larger. So now if we go over the top of it, it grows the stars. So the next one along rotates the objects as we move across them. So if we come down, we can see beside our cursor, there's a little arrow indicating um, ro uh, clockwise rotation. So as we move along, it rotates the stars clockwise around their center of rotation. If we hold down shift, the arrow reverses and it does it anti-clockwise. So if we move on to the next mode, this is one to be a little bit careful with. This one duplicates um, objects as you run your cursor over them. So if we brush over these a couple of times, nothing appears to be happening until we come up and get our selection tool. Just unclick. We get our selection tool, and as you can see now, we've got lots of copies under each one. So be aware that you can create an awful lot of copies very quickly, unintentionally. And like the other tools, we can hold down shift and then when we stroke over, we can delete objects. So the modes we've gone over so far haven't actually affected the shape of our objects. We've moved them, we've scaled them, we've rotated them, we've duplicated them, but it hasn't actually affected the actual shape of the stars. The next ones we're going to look at actually warp the shape of the paths. So if we move on to the next one, this is push parts of paths in any direction. So now if we come in and move things or drag our cursor, we can actually warp stars. This is, this is particularly handy if you're doing artwork and it's created from a lot of paths and you want to adjust something, you can adjust all of the paths at once by selecting them all. The next one along shrinks parts of the path. So as we drag it over, you can see the shapes shrink away. If we hold down shift, it grows the paths. So as you can see, they start to expand. But this just grows them outwards, so it does affect the shape of the path. But it's just a nice way of expanding shapes out. Next one we've got attracts parts of the path towards the cursor. So as we move it across, you can see it attracting the shapes towards the cursor. If we hold down shift, it will repel the shapes. So the next mode we've got along the line is roughen parts of paths. This one is where fidelity comes in. If we have a low fidelity, it will try and keep paths relatively simple. If we have a high fidelity, it will uh, create a lot of nodes. Working on the stars seemed to slow my computer down quite a lot whilst working with the roughen tool. So I'm going to do is just work on what was an ellipse that we were using at the beginning. I'm going to reduce the fidelity down we put it down to three. So now when we stroke over our ellipse, 
it roughens the edge but tries to keep it relatively simple so if we get our nodes tool we can see there's not a huge amount of nodes around the outside whereas if we come back to our tweak tool and ramp that fidelity up we just stroke over this side we get much more extreme reactions but if we now get our nodes tool we can see without even zooming in that there are hundreds of nodes there so like I say with this one you just need to be aware that more nodes slows your computer so if you've got an extreme amount of nodes your computer is going to run very slowly or at least mine will if, you might, if you've got a high powered computer you might get away with it so that's roughen. So I'm working back with my stars again. I've got all my stars selected. I've come back into the tweak tool. So what I'm going to do is just come up and move along to the next mode. This is the paint mode. So we get a few extra options on this one. We've got channels. So in channels, we've got hue, saturation, lightness and opacity. Now we can adjust all of these um, in our fill and stroke dialog box. So we can do it for the fill, we can do it for the stroke. The opacity is the overall opacity. So down here, if you look up at the top, you can see the opacity changing. So we can turn that right back up. Um, strokes on set, we could go into stroke here and we could set our stroke this way or we could go down to the bottom and set the stroke and fill down the bottom here so sorry we change that back to red and we hold down shift and give it a blue stroke for this tool the stroke width isn't taken into account it doesn't affect the stroke width it just affects the colors and the opacity so now we've set it how we want it we can come over and we can brush our tool over the top of our shapes and it slowly changes them the more we brush over the brighter the color becomes so it slowly changes the color of your objects to your color settings it's a nice way to add a little bit of uh, graduated color into your projects if you have problems um, setting your fill and stroke colors up the top here you set the fill color and then when you go to set the stroke color the fill becomes unset if we just left click up here so this brings up our preferences menu box in here we've got two options that you can use you can either use last use style which is what I've got it set on which allows us to go in and adjust our colors or you can have it on this tools own style and that has fill and stroke there but you'll find that as you set one the other one will become unset so for ease of use check that you're set to last use style and then you can get rid of that and you can set these as you want them and one last thing up the top with our channels you can actually choose which channels you want to be affected so you can if you wanted to, you could turn off the opacity. So the opacity is not affected by this tool. You could turn off lightness and saturation. So it's just the hue that's been affected when you use your paint tool. So I think that covers everything we need to know about the paint tool. So the next mode we've got is jitter the color. So this just adds a bit of um, random, randomness to the color of our objects. So we can brush over and it just adds a bit of random color. But one thing to remember is that this tool takes all of the channels into account. If you don't want your opacity changed, then you want to turn opacity off up here before using it. So if we back step to get rid of that, we could actually turn lightness and saturation off and then it should just adjust the hue. So as you move over these things, it'll just add, add a bit of random jitter to the hue. So that's our jitter tool. The next one along is blur. So if we click on this, this one does exactly what it says. It just, as we stroke over, we can blur objects out. And if we hold down the shift, we can unblur objects.
So that covers all of our modes. We've looked at the width, the force, the fidelity, how we can adjust the color. One last thing I just wanted to quickly demonstrate was how we can actually put this tool to use. Here I've got a illustration of a light bulb which I've downloaded from Pixabay. I'll put the description, I'll put the link in the description below. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and I'm going to ungroup these. I'm going to hold down shift, I'm going to deselect these little light rays around the outside. Then I'm going to regroup it again. So all of these, the center bits are grouped together. So for an example, I'm just going to change this light bulb so it's a bit more love heart shaped. So now I've just got the uh, light bulb uh, selected on its own. I'm just going to come in with the tweak tool. I'm just going to grab my um, push parts of pars in any direction. And I'm literally just going to reshape this. I'm going to turn the force down because it can be a bit extreme if you've got too much force. And we can just get our selection tool. And we can adjust these little rays to wherever we want them. So this isn't perfect, but it's just a quick demonstration of how you can put it to use. So with minimum effort, we've we've adjusted one, two, three, four, five different paths all at the same time to create a completely different look to our illustration. So I hope that's been helpful. Uh, thanks for watching, and I shall see you in the next video.